Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Two wide receivers will be looking to be number one targets on the field in today's game. It's Doug Baldwin's Seahawks going up against Nelson's Packers. In December, it might be a different story, but it's a beautiful afternoon for football in Green Bay. And that's where we'll find our commentators, Brandon Gotti and Charles Davis. We are at the oldest continually operating stadium in the NFL as you get a look inside Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. No team means more to a city than the Packers to Green Bay. And this was the scene a few moments ago as the green and gold made their way out of the historic tunnel. They're ready to go as they get set to match up with the Seattle Seahawks. Hello, folks. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gunn. And a moment ago, Larry gave us a look at the two number one receivers that will be facing off here. But you think it's more than just one-on-one. -on -one. Both these teams, they've got a number of pass-catching options. And I'm eager to see how both teams will attack the opposite defenses because is it going to be where they're going to be a dart-throwing team, throw it short and try and make plays that way? Or will the long ball be a part of it? But you're right. Lots of options for both of these squads. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. So out come the Seahawks now for their first possession. Russell Wilson leading him out there, six-year quarterback who finished his college ball, of course, as a Wisconsin Badger. One of the more cerebral quarterbacks in the NFL analyzes situations, watches a ton of tape, adapts his game to whatever is presented in front of him. And despite the fact he's been in the league for six years, the future still bright for Russell Wilson. Carry. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They wanted it every position, and we just saw there some linebackers that can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. And not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. And the offense moving in the wrong direction here now as they face a second and 12. They stay on the ground, rolls again. And he'll lose yardage here, back to the 15. So he loses three yards there, now third down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs. And let's face it, they know how to finish plays too. Eyes up, head up, run right through. Yeah, I don't think this is the script they had in mind for their opening drive. This is third and long. From the shotgun, Wilson. He's got Curse. Give him 30 yards there. Unfortunately, Packers fans, they saw a lot of completions like that last year when they were number 31 in the league in passing defense. Now, I know injuries had something to do with that, but that's, that's a ship they're looking to right. They have to because what they do so well on offense in some ways, they're wasting by allowing what they're allowing on defense. So now you change things up. Do you play a little more zone where in the past you might have played man-to-man? -man? Do you back off of some of the schemes that you played before and emphasize something new? Bottom line, though, they've got to cover tighter and knock away a few of those passes downfield. First down, this is Rawls. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. And we take a look at the offense for the Seahawks. In music, the Seattle sound is distinctive. In the NFL, it's the Seattle running game. Usually ranked in the top five in the NFL. It fell to number 25 in 2016. And they're trying to revamp the offensive line and find a bell cow running back in order to get things moving again. Second down following the run. Thank you. 
They go again with Rawls. And he might have got this across midfield, not by much. They'll mark it down at the 49. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. And a peek at the defense for the Packers. Green Bay's defense in 2016 was a bit unbalanced. Number eight against the run, but number 31 against the pass. So you know the offseason emphasis is on trying to make sure they shored up the secondary and increase the pass rush. And defensively going with a dime set, six DBs on third and four. From the gun, it's Wilson. And almost picked off. I guess the good news for them now, it's fourth down. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Now John Ryan, 12th year in the league, on to punt it away. As the first drive of the game stalls out, he's on to punt. This one angles out of bounds in a good spot in the coffin corner. And they're going to mark this out of the five-yard line. And now the Packers get set to go. Tough spot here for the offense to start. Back near the goal line. Here's Rodgers. And this one complete to Martellus Bennett. And they'll get him down up past the 15, just shy of the 20. They were looking for a little spark and some breathing room. They got it right there, a gain of 14 and a first down. lining up first and ten. Shotgun now for Rodgers. He's going to wind up and air it out. And got his man complete. And he is out of bounds on the other side of midfield. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. Now, that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time and allowed for the big completion downfield, those guys made that play possible. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Throwing on first down is Rodgers. And he is out of bounds, just a yard or two shy of the 30. Another nice gain, 16 yards there, and a first down again. Probably me to jump in on you, partner, but they didn't waste any time getting downfield, did they? I mean, a nice big play there. Three plays, three successful plays in plus territory. Now this defense on its heels a bit. It seems like they had something targeted there, doesn't it? It's like, okay, we've got a matchup we like coming right out of the gate. Let's go ahead and get right to it. The first carry here for Ty Montgomery. And he is knocked down from the side. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. K.J. Wright just keeps getting better at outside linebacker. Long, lengthy guy, can rush the passer, can drop into coverage. Has great agility, though, to stay on his feet and make tackles, too. And still has years ahead of him. Turned 27 in July, native of Olive Branch, Mississippi. Three, 
Draw play. Rodgers to Montgomery. About three yards there to the 27. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean, or else they just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. They got to get it to the 21 here on third down. Throwing is Rodgers. This is Cobb with a catch right side. Now the ball comes loose, and the Seahawks have picked it up. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. the fumble recovery it's Wilson and the tip there altered the ball flight and it falls incomplete it'll be second down really nice play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball but for the guys on the offensive line they're doing a nice job of trying to protect their passer but when a guy hops in the air and goes airborne to try and knock one away it's difficult because you can't reach out and grab him that'll be a holding penalty so all you're trying to do is make some type of a play on him make some type of contact to try and get his arms out of the sky on second down rolls and he will lose yardage on the play back at his own 19-yard line It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and 11. Yeah, and that was a safety that came through and made the play, but there's no doubt in my mind, he hits like a linebacker, and we see a lot of that in today's NFL, don't we? And that time, we do indeed a big hit for a loss. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Play action. Now Wilson. And it falls incomplete after almost being intercepted. A pick there would have been great. The good news for the defense now, it's fourth down. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it. Just move on to the next play. Here's John Ryan now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Forty-four on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. We'll call that a 49-yard punt with a return of just two. And it'll be Packer football here, first down and ten. And the Seahawks defense heads back out there now. And they force that fumble the last time. And when it happens on a previous drive, you kind of get thirsty for it to happen again. No doubt about it, because the person who created the turnover or the takeaway, he's getting the gold star. He's going to be the he's going to be the one we look at in film session and go, way to go. Everybody wants that praise from the coach. That means the next time out that you want it to be you. Do they still hand out gold stars? You know, amazingly enough, it's the simple things in life that motivate these guys. <laughs> a sticker, just a little That's gold it, sticker. A little, little helmet sticker yeah. in college. Yeah, put, it on your put a little gold sticker on their scouting sheet. Things like that. They love that stuff. Makes them feel good. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. 
We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Rodgers to throw on second down. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. A gain of four on the play, and that's going to lead to a third down. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. Rodgers going to try and throw on third down. And unable to connect. If he had caught it, it would have been a first down. Instead, it's fourth. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Now on to kick it away, the rookie from Miami, Justin Vogel. Back deep for the Seahawks, the all-pro returner from 2015, Tyler Lockett. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. The Seahawks offense now, they get set to go back to work. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now, not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you got to think about, okay, what type of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up? And tough starting field position here. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. And he'll take this one up to about the 13. He'll get eight on the keeper there. It'll be second and a couple. And that run there does nothing but juice up the guys who are moving the football. I mean, if you're an offensive lineman, people running it, actually the guy calling plays, you're almost jumping up and down in jubilation, aren't you? And now you've got options on second down. And big time options. You might want to think about play action and try and get something cheap right here over the top. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And his throw is incomplete. He was trying to get it to Jermaine Curse, and it's third and short. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. The Seahawks on third down, just one for three thus far. Here it's third and two. Operating from the gun, Wilson. And he finds Jimmy Graham. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. A Seahawk first down, Wilson to his big target, Graham. Jimmy Graham had a really tough injury in 2015 that ended his season, but what a bounce back in 2016. How do you not get any votes for comeback player of the year? I was just going to ask you that. Not that Jordy Nelson wasn't deserving, but 65 catches, 923 yards. That was the highest total by a tight end in Seahawk history. And I think there's a chance that both of those numbers will increase in 2017. Wilson to give to Rawls. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action, hit them over the top. Second down, eight. Now a 
it's Wilson. It's caught outright by Graham. And he'll be out of bounds up past the 45. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. From the gun, Wilson. His throw incomplete. The intended target, Doug Baldwin, at its second down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here. But that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open. And this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Back to the ground attack. It's Rawls. And no room to maneuver there. Give him a yard up to the 47. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? The Seahawks on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and nine. They go play action now. Wilson. And he's got Lockett. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A very solid gain of 27. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Now a play fake here on first down. Wide open receiver complete. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? It takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football. Because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone. Sometimes you're throwing it between the zones. Sometimes the receiver is going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read, but when they're in sync, it's really effective. Gets around him, and he will not be denied. Into the end zone, touchdown Seahawks. Thomas Rawls, a 10-yard touchdown run. And the Seahawks have taken a first quarter lead. And on his way to the end zone, shedding the tackle, he would not be denied. That's what's called finishing the run making sure you power your way through one-on-one -on -one tackle no running back wants to go to the bench and say ah i got stopped just short blair walsh on to attempt the extra point and this will give the seahawks a seven to nothing lead So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it's Thomas Rawls who finishes it off with a touchdown run.
Here's Walsh now to kick this one off. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. And the results for them have not been strong to this point. Two drives have ended in a turnover and then a punt. So would it be too snarky for me to say that they've shown improvement? Because you had two, two drives with turnovers. <laughs> now they punted it away, so at least they didn't turn it over. So that's good, right? You're going to get some angry users <laughs> reaching out to you on social media. Well, I don't mean to be. I was actually looking for the positive. Silver lining, you know. Start on the ground with Montgomery. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. Because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. can run another play. The clock hits triple zeros. And time is up on the first quarter. It's a close game here early on. We're back to Lambeau in just a moment. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Packers in possession of the football. They've got a second down and eight to start things out. Second down, Montgomery. And this will go for five up to the 33. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. A nickel look by Seattle on third down. Yep, five defensive backs now. They'll run it. Here's Montgomery. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Calling a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. I think many people thought Ty Montgomery would automatically go back to being a wide receiver this year, but it appears he's going to stay at running back. I know they drafted Jamal Williams from BYU, but Montgomery proving his worth. And he proved it, yeah, proved it last year. 5.4 yards per carry, fourth best in the league. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Rodgers hands to Montgomery. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. He'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. We think, Brandon, I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job, but they're doing more than that, aren't they? They're getting a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the tackle. The Packers on third down, just one for three thus far. This is going to be third and 13. 319. 319. On play action, it's Rodgers. Going up top. And that's caught inside the 30. 
And they're able to get this one down to the 25. And give them a gain of 37. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. So it looks like somebody may have forgotten the snap count and a five-yard penalty ensues. Ball start, offense. So that'll back him up five. Still first down. And here comes play number six on this drive. From the gun, it's Rodgers. Caught left side by Cobb. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. 13 yards there offset some of the penalty yardage as it's second down. And Charles, this infraction is going to be against the offense. False start. Sometimes you have to get up to the line of scrimmage, make sure your team is set before you begin your cadence. Yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still second down. again and they'll march even further backward offense. that one on Brian Bulaga still second down And they're behind the sticks here a bit, now dealing with a second and 12. And here's motion again, and that's gonna be two in a row. That's gonna set him back five yards. Still second down. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Following the penalty, Montgomery. A great move by Montgomery. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Second down to the sideline, and that is a heck of a catch as he was able to get both feet in. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. I know Devontae Adams really developed in 2016 as a receiver for Green Bay. I think he had plenty of incentive because when Aaron Rodgers breaks contain, gets out of the pocket, 
anything can happen downfield. You can find yourself open, can't you? And it makes Adams a high-volume guy. Week 7 and 8 last year, 25 catches. Highest two-game total in the illustrious history of the Packers. Now Rodgers. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here... He's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. So now on fourth down, Rodgers will give way to Mason Crosby for the field goal try. From the right hash, this from 45 yards away. And this one is right down the middle. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So this offensive unit, they've now had three drives, and they only have three points to show for it. Payoff is the key for everything. How many offenses have we talked to that say we have to finish drives? Thus far, this team hasn't finished it quite the way they wanted to. After the main field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. We get a look at the Packers' defense as they work their way into position. See if they can regroup a little bit. They gave up the touchdown last drive. And you know from our meetings with coaches all across the league, one of their pet peeves, when teams get down, a lot of these guys now, they, they want to treat it like it's a video game or something. Hit reset. Let's start over, coach. Now the first two series, they don't even matter now. Let's, let's play again. That's not how it works. You're down. You gave up a touchdown. You can't do it again. You have to dig in, grit it out, and fight it out. Reset buttons. That is driving everybody crazy. There are no reset buttons when you're playing in this game. Preach, Chucky. Preach. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. Nothing on that one. It'll be second down. Well, he caught it right at the line of scrimmage, and before he could even think about advancing it forward, he got hit. Great tackling, because that's what you're taught. Don't give up yards after the catch, and most offenses make a living off of yards after catch. Those hidden yards that may not go into the score sheet, but they count big for moving the ball and stretching the field. Really nice open field tackle. Now Wilson on second down. They set up the screen to Rawls. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 12 yards there as they move the chains. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. Positioning here is key. As a defensive back, you're taught 99% of the time make a play on the football. But in this case, making a play on the man was all the difference. That's what forced the incompletion. And on second and 10 now. Wilson going to give to Rawls. Now that play is blown up. Losing yardage back at the 35. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Came out in a power set, but that only served to put more men in the box. And guess what? If you're going to do that, 
you've got to win up front, right? Your offensive guys have got to beat the defenders. They lost all leverage on that play. The Seahawks on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and 11. Wilson operating from the gun. He lets it fly, for, and that's caught inside the 30. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. Tyler Lockett, 65 yards. And the Seahawks find a way to stretch their lead. And he showcased his blazing speed on that one. Was he wearing football cleats or track spikes? <laughs> because he was gone. Big time play. And just think about what that does if you're a receiver on the team with him. Well, that's got to open things up for you as well. Because if I'm a defense, I've got to get back deeper and deeper in order to keep him in front. But I'm not sure how many can actually keep him in front with that speed. An extra point try now for Walsh. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. Five plays there on that drive. And it all culminates with a Seattle score. Here's Walsh now to kick this one off. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. The Packers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder. It puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. They go play action here on first down. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Ataba Rubin with a great push up front. He picks up the sack at a loss of eight. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. Second down, here's Rodgers. Trying to hit the tight end, Bennett, but it's intercepted. Good positioning, and it's picked off. And he's going to return it to the 21-yard line. Offensively, when you see cover two, the thought has to go through the quarterback's head. Drive the football when making throws. It's not just the deep guys covering. It's the guys underneath you have to be careful of. Drive your throw. Otherwise, you see what results? Interceptions. And we move our focus to Thomas Rawls. He's hoping to get it going. They're hoping to get him going, too. You know, he's about ready to pop one here in the second quarter. He's hoping. And his offensive line teammates, they want to get one of those, too, because they want to continue to run the football. Most offensive linemen like that part of the game better than pass protection because they're not taking blows. Right. They're actually dealing them out. So what they want to do is show the coaches, hey, if we pop one, we're having success. That way, they won't go away from the running game. He'll be hoping to pop one, break one here this go-around. A 
the 10th carry for Thomas Rolls. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. He came out ready to play. That's three tackles for a loss, Charles, rolling the second quarter. And that's problematic for the guys trying to run offense because that means he's got a pretty good idea of what they're doing and is actually beating them to the point of attack and making those plays. You might have to think about some misdirection or something to try and get him away from the ball. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and they'll be facing a third and 12. The evolution of Clay Matthews as a player is just one that they, they're going to end up writing books about. He didn't even start until his senior year at USC. He didn't start in high school. And now he's at all-pro level in the NFL. How about the play he just made there? Yeah, he has certainly made a name for himself. William Clay Matthews III. <laughs> On third down, Wilson. Incomplete. He had his hands on it, but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. I know ultimately that feels like a good defensive play, but I know it's really not. They had a chance to keep points off the board. Now they have a chance to kick a field goal by missing that shot. Yeah, especially at this spot in the field. He's got to be upset he couldn't come up with that INT. So on fourth down, Pete Carroll is going to call out his field goal unit. From the left hash, this will be a 41-yarder. And Walsh able to convert it as his kick is good. And they will stretch the lead now to 17-3. to So the defense gets the pick. The offense, Charles, they go backwards, but they do get three points. Very happy to get to three, but you know who's happier? The defensive team on the other side. They shut them down after the turnover. To the made field goal, Walsh back out to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. Montgomery to begin the drive. And an alley to run. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? at the 37-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Michael Bennett's versatility, being able to play any position along the defensive front, allows him to make those types of plays. He finds good matchups and gets into the offensive backfield. And there it works for a tackle for loss. And 
This is the 10th carry for Ty Montgomery. And he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. Four yards on the pickup there as they get it back to a more manageable third and seven. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. The Packers on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and seven. Shotgun now for Rodgers. And that is incomplete. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they've looked lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. On now is the Packers punter. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. So let's glance at a player spotlight now with Russell Wilson. He's had one of those games that any quarterback loves, not only being able to complete some passes, but some deep passes. And it's pretty to watch. I mean, it's an absolute joy to see, but let's face it. we got to give a little bit of credit where it's deserved, right? Well, the protection's been great protection's if that's where you're been, going. The protection's been phenomenal, but how about how it's been spotlighted, right? Our producer, Christian McLeod, our director, Kyle Burt, the rest of the crew, what they put together with these images and pictures, if you're an offensive lineman, that's what you're taking with you to contract time. <laughs> They're going to have a lot to take to contract time if this continues. And not great starting field position here for the offense. The drive begins with a run by Rawls. Gets out of a little bit of trouble there with a shifty move. He'll take it up past the six. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And that run... That changes the whole mentality about the drive right there. They were starting on their own two-yard line. They just wanted enough space to punt the football successfully. Now they're talking about putting together a drive. On second down, Wilson. And a grab made by Doug Baldwin. 23 yards on the play. I don't care how many times you tell the story, it never loses its luster for me. Doug Baldwin, undrafted out of Stanford, and plays like a number one receiver should in the NFL. I don't care how you cover him. I don't care that his size isn't great. He's the one that typically comes up with the football. Absolutely. His roots go all the way back to Gulf Breeze, Florida, where he's from, right on the water near Pensacola, and then, of course, to Stanford, and, boy, he's been good. Throw on first down with Wilson. And Graham's got it over the middle. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. When halftime rolls around in just a bit, we'll send you to Orlando. You will hear the dulcet tones of Mr. Larry Ridley with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Does dulcet mean good? Yeah, it's just something that broadcasters say. It's got to be good, right? It's got to be you good. You tell me. Well, it's got to be good if Larry's doing it. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. The tight end, Luke Wilson, was the target. And that'll bring up second down. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down.
Second and ten now, Wilson. Packer pressure, and down he goes. Mike Daniels in there to get him for a loss of five. Partner, I know the ball security's preached like crazy, but every now and then you've got to know when to get rid of the football and save a little bit of yardage if you're a quarterback. Because now if you're the offensive coordinator, what does it do if it was third and ten versus third and much longer as it is now? Yeah, it changes everything in terms of play calling and the pressure you might expect to face on the very next down. Had to throw the ball away and save the yardage. He didn't get it done. Wilson of the Seahawks looking for something big following the sack. It's third and long here. Wilson going to hand it to Procise. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. And now a timeout coming from the defensive side for the Packers. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Here's John Ryan now as he's on to punt for Seattle. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And good hustle here as this is going to be blown dead right at the nine-yard line. Jordy Nelson now trotting back out there on offense. They've got to be thinking, how can we get him a little bit more involved here? Second quarter, you're down, and really, he's been out of the mix. I would agree with that, and oftentimes you hear, well, we're just taking what the defense is giving us, but sometimes that's just not good enough. Sometimes you have to take what you want, and that means getting him the football. Yeah, so far just a single catch in this game. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. First and ten, here's Rodgers. And over the middle to the tight end, Bennett. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As he'll stop it with a tick under a minute to go before half. to avoid the hit. It's a pickup of 15 and a fresh set of downs. First down now, but that clock rolling. On first down, Rodgers looking middle, and it's incomplete. The new acquisition, Martellus Bennett, the intended target. And now it's second down. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Rodgers will try again on second down. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. The reception good for seven. It's third down. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? 
Toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. So a challenge coming down from the booth, and that's where these challenges come from, of course, in the final two minutes of the half. Yeah, and now we're going to New York, right? That's command central for the officials. They'll talk, they'll take a look at it, communicate with the referee at the game site, and issue a final decision because they do have the final call now. The Packers on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. Here it's third and three. Working from the gun, Rodgers finds his target, Montgomery. <laughs> A big hit. Knocked down sideways. They give him 12 yards and a first down. Rodgers to throw once more. Is incomplete. Down to 15 seconds now. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Ten yards still left on second down. Throwing again. Rodgers. He gets it over the middle to Cobb. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. And offensively, they'll take the timeout with six seconds left in the second quarter. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout. And now they get set to line up as we resume action. So on third down, the field goal unit will come out as he'll try to get three before half. This from 54 yards away. <laughs> Able to spin free. to decline the penalty. Everything turned out the way they wanted it to. No sense in even having to take that one, hence the decline. Thanks, Brandon. I'm Larry Ridley, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. The Packers trailing home at halftime. The Seahawks will want to come out after the half and really put the pressure on from the start. All right, let's get straight to it. Here's some highlights from the first half. Now first and 10, here are the catches made way downfield, and he'll eventually be brought down, but not before getting to the 47-yard line. A fumble later on the drive would lead to a turnover. Seahawks lined up at the 10. Rawls is looking for room to run, and he kept off the long drive with the TD as they take a 7-0 lead. Seahawks have the football midway through the second. Lockett's wide open down the field. And this great play will go for six. That'll do it for us here at EA Sports Studios. Let's get back out to Brandon and Charles for the call of the second half. Brandon.
So both teams have their marching orders and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Now trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Third quarter starting with a run from Montgomery. <laughs> And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out by a few inches. That'll be a first down. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. So here we go, first and 10 now. A play fake to Montgomery. Now Rodgers. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Devontae Adams, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Single, single, single Rodgers again here on second and ten. Caught on the right side by Adams. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 17 yards is the pickup there for number 17. He's down to about the 40. And just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Offense in a good spot here, second and two. Now it's Rodgers. And he'll go out of bounds down inside the 15-yard line. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator's looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. And now a first down following that long game. Into the red zone, it's Rodgers. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Mike Bennett in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. And it's never good to take a sack. You really don't want to take one down here in this part of the field down near the red zone. Not at all, because you're already pretty much assured of a field goal. But you take a big sack, it could push you out of range, and that's why defenses get a little more aggressive in this situation. They're almost conceding the three points. They want to push you back and try and take you out of that. Single, single. 
Rodgers to throw on second down. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Michael Bannon in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. Okay, let's go back a little bit and see if my schooling comes to the front. What's that old saying? Those who forget the lessons of history are doomed to repeat them. That's the same guy who's gotten back-to-back -back sacks. I think a double team may be in order. Rodgers now, after the sack, he'll lead the pack up on third and long. Rodgers going to throw. His throw caught at about the five. And they do get him down, but not before he reaches the four-yard line. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. They'll run with Montgomery. And the D not yielding much there. He's only going to get a yard to about the two. Every team we ever talk to that continues to run the ball in a game, even when they haven't had much success, all talks about attrition, don't they? If you keep running it, eventually good things are likely to happen. It's been a hard go in this game today, hasn't it? Yeah, this defense, they've met pretty much every challenge in front of them this afternoon. They're still trying to run the ball, but they're not finding much space. Second down, the ball on the two here, second and goal. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Well, sometimes I get caught in hyperbole, but I think they desperately need to punch this one in. They're running out of time. Yeah, two-score game, second half. You're down here. This is the time to put it in the end zone. Man, not going to get much better than this for an opportunity. <laughs> Got to figure this is one they need here on third and goal. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Rodgers now on third and goal. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, Packers. Jordy Nelson from three yards out. And the Packers have cut it back within a score. That's a score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there's an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency yet relaxed enough to get it done. On is Mason Crosby for the point after. And it's up through the goal post. It's 17-10. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And the result, a Green Bay score. beyond now to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. 
Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession, and that was punt the football, because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing, but control the game offensively, put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. They start on the ground with Rawls. And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Second down, here's Wilson. And the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. Nick Perry coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. Wilson of the Seahawks looking for something big following the sack. It's third and long here. Play action. Now Wilson. Oh, incomplete. Nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. Here's John Ryan now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. It's a four-yard return following a punt of 49. And that will come the offense as they take over. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And they had to go a long way on their last drive to score the touchdown. This time, they get at least a little bit more of a cushion with field position. I have to think that with this field position, after what they did on the last drive, they might want to take a shot right now and try to cut down the length of the drive. Trying to get something going with Ty Montgomery. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. From the gun, it's Rodgers. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Bennett. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. Have you gotten used to seeing Martellus Bennett number 80? I mean, he's been number 88 his entire career, right? And how about that? The fans selecting his jersey number. Yeah, that was his idea. He put that out there on social media and said, here, here are a few choices. What should I wear? And he went with what the fans picked. Over 100,000 people weighed in. From midfield, here's Rodgers.
So this is Montgomery with a grab over the middle. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. 34 yards there at a first down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end. But running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. K.J. Wright able to get in there and take him down for a loss of three. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Defense in a good spot. Let's see how the offense responds with a second and 13 now. To throw is Rodgers. Complete left side, the tight end Rodgers. The Rodgers to Rodgers connection, good for a Packer first down. When we see another great performance like this out of Aaron Rodgers, you have to chuckle thinking that his only FBS offer was a walk-on at Illinois. And now he's the pride of Butte Junior College, of course at Cal. And I remember watching him play at Cal, and he would run seven-on-seven seven drills. Angry if the ball ever hit the ground, and it didn't do it very often. Five yards to go for the offense. First down and goal from that five-yard line. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. When we talk about being on schedule, I think they're on schedule after that run, getting it right down there on the doorstep. Maybe even a little bit ahead, because now the defense can't dictate with pressure. They're guessing about where you're going to go. I might come right back at them with the same play, the same set, and see if they can stop them. They'll run it with Williams. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Green Bay touchdown. A great play there. Taking it in. And the Packers are within an extra point of tying this thing up. Well, this offense only mustered three points in the first half on that field goal. They picked up the pace now. Two third-quarter touchdowns. Hey, you remember that appearance we had last week in front of that crowd? And, and they asked yeah. about halftime adjustments and all that that was going on. And... Remember what I said, it's not always an adjustment at halftime. Sometimes just remembering the game plan and playing better, tuning it up and just working through it methodically, they got it done in this case. And of course, I'll always remember that appearance because I had on a brown belt with black shoes and you pointed that out in front of the crowd. So thanks for that. I said that out loud. You did. Uh, my bad. Nothing separating these two teams on the scoreboard as the kick's away here. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And out now come the Seahawks. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with a game this close, 
you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. They'll try to get the running game going with Rawls. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. So we've got a second and five. Rawls. No, a heck of a move. Oh, man. Seven yards there. Good enough to move the sticks. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. here on first down. Now he's going to go deep down the left side. And that's caught inside the 30. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That one goes for 36 yards. I know at this level, initially, they were worried about him being only 5'11", pocket presence. It plays like that, I just remind you, he does it so well at every level. North Carolina State, a little bit more of the spread stuff. At Wisconsin, pro style out of the pocket. And the biggest throws he makes in the NFL still come from the pocket. Russell Wilson can do it all. And now a first down following that long game. Here's Wilson. They'll lock it with a grab over the middle. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. On second down, Wilson. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. The Seahawks on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This time it's third and three. Again, Wilson. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. have time to get another play in here as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL and it's on EA Sports. Back now at Lambeau. All even as we get ready to start the fourth.
And the next snap coming inside the red zone here. Now Wilson running left on the option. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. And that one will go for 13 yards on the keeper and a first down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people are worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. On the ground, rolls. And he will take this one in for the Seattle touchdown. Thomas Rolls, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Seahawks have taken the lead. Uh, he's giving him a little jolt, just gave him the lead there, but two TDs now in the game. And that jolt puts them in the lead. What a terrific job by him. He is carrying the ball and simply saying, I want to win. And now he's hoping his defense has that mentality as they try to hang on to that lead. So that drive goes eight plays, and it's Thomas Rawls who finishes it off with a touchdown run. Here's Walsh now to kick this one off. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Throwing on first down is Rodgers. And he just gets rid of it, throws it away. The wise move there looked like nobody open. Now second down. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude, but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. Rodgers to Montgomery on the draw. And he'll get this one across the 20, but only up to about the 21. He only got a couple on that one, so not a ton of health. They'll have a third and eight forthcoming. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And 4C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. The Packers on third down. Five out of nine thus far. This is third and eight. Play action. Now it's Rodgers. It's caught. Nelson. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing.
So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. On first and ten, here's Rodgers. It's brought in by Janice. Touchdown, Packers! Jeff Janice, 58 yards. And the Packers are within an extra point of tying this thing up. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions, and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. That was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. And now a critical extra point attempt here. And no sweat, he puts it through, and we are tied here in the fourth. Just a four-play drive that time. And it ends with a Packers touchdown. go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Now a play fake here on first down. They find some open field here. It's a gain of seven, and it'll be a second down. <laughs> Offense staying ahead of the chains here, second and three. The play fake to Rawls. Wilson. And his throw here is incomplete. Tyler Lockett was the target there. And it's third and short. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. And the Seahawks on third down. They've hit on half of them. Five for ten. Here it's third and three. From the gun, it's Wilson. It's caught on the left side by Baldwin. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. First down, Seahawks, Wilson to Baldwin. At some point, the doubters have to just kind of back off with Doug Baldwin, don't they? I mean, we're talking about back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons, had over 90 catches in 2016. He's going to play with a chip on his shoulder, but he's going to be productive. 2016, also his first Pro Bowl as well. Continues for Rawls. And his rough afternoon continues. He's going nowhere again. No gain on the play there. Second down. Well, he was stopped on that play, but he's had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. Oh, 
They stay on the ground. Rawls again. And he'll push his way up to about the 44 here. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave him with third and still seven yards to go. Tough day. Tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. On third down, Wilson. And incomplete here on third down. I know tight ends love this route because a lot of times they'll fake a block first and get a little bit of space and then come across the middle because in their mind, they're thinking catch the ball and then drop the hammer on the little guys in the secondary. Unable to drop the hammer, he just dropped the pass. Here's John Ryan now. He's been terrific so far. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. It doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about their opportunity. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Rodgers now on first down. In the middle of the field, he's got Nelson. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. For Jordy last year, tremendous. NFL's comeback player of the year, 97 catches, over 1,200 yards, and led the NFL 14 receiving touchdowns. Well deserving to be the comeback player of the year, but I know these types of competitors, they don't like to be the ones to come back from anything. They just want to be consistent, and Jordy Nelson is definitely that. So the offense has it first and 10. Shotgun now for Rodgers. Looking deep for Bennett. And that's caught inside the 30. Touchdown, Packers. Martellus Bennett, 68 yards. And the Packers have moved out in front. Might be seeing that one on the highlight shows tonight. The home run ball here in the fourth quarter to take the lead. There's nothing like being aggressive, preaching that to your team, and then following through all the way through. Go ahead and throw one more up there. Why not? Been a great game, and we are not done yet. Extra point try now for Crosby. And they will take a seven-point lead now. The quick strike ability certainly intact there. Two plays, 80 yards to score it. beyond now to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. He spins free. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line.
And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. on first down he's going to launch this thing way downfield that's going to be knocked away and incomplete this defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball and they were more than ready for it they've got the lead fourth quarter maybe can expect more passes like that downfield Second down here after the incomplete pass. Now Wilson throwing again. They set up the screen to Rawls. Got some room at the 30. And he's brought down after a good game. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. They ran that one well, and not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. set of downs here. From the shotgun, Wilson. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far in second down. That one didn't quite make it to the target, but that's not always a function of the strength of the arm of the quarterback, is it? Sometimes it's just too much pressure there. In any case, the ball doesn't arrive. Second and 10, it's Wilson again. He'll set up the screen to Lacey. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. On first down, Wilson. Going to Rawls on the dump off. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. It's a four-yard pickup, and it'll make it second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. Second down to the offense in search of six yards. <laughs> to throw again is Wilson. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. Nothing on the screen that time. Now it's third down. So many screen passes are the result of excellent acting by everyone. 
But sometimes the guy who's getting the ball tips to play off. <laughs> you know, the running back, because he's, he's eager to get the pass, and sometimes he doesn't act very well about whether he's going to block or leak out or whatever. And I think that they saw that, and that's why they're able to get to him on it. And they insert their dime package, six DBs here on third and six. Expecting pass all the way. Wilson will throw again. He's got Curse. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. And now inside the red zone, the offense will operate. So the chain gang now done for the drive ball on the 10, first and goal. And this time, the yards won't come so easy as they'll, in fact, tackle him behind the line. Now, that was a terrific play. We're down here near the goal line, and only one word comes to mind for me, and that's overwhelm, because they absolutely overwhelmed the offensive line. He came free and made the hit in the backfield. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Now Wilson on second down. Drops it underneath for Rawls. They give him a dozen on the pitch and catch, but now they're up against a third and goal. He's having a big game through the air, and sometimes those smart decisions just dump it off. That's how you continue to have big games through the air. I agree totally. That's, that's a great analogy, a great way to put it, because he doesn't get too greedy where everything has to be pushed downfield, trying to create big plays that aren't there. You dump it off and take that nice gain, and things add up, and now you have the kind of game he's having. Now we've got whistles and movement up front. I think this is against Seattle. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. The battle in the trench is never more important than right now. This is third and in inches. Wilson now from the gun. He'll throw. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. Jermaine Kurz, a five-yard touchdown. And the Seahawks just an extra point away from tying this thing up. And now we're all even. Brand new ball game, tie game. In a sense, you're starting over. Tie ball game, everyone's back to even, back to equal. A good job getting back in it. And now a critical extra point attempt here. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And the Seahawks capping it off with a touchdown. So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. 
Ty Montgomery and the offense getting set for their next drive. He's toppled the century mark already receiving the football, closing in on that on the ground, too. They've really had trouble handling him. I think from what we've seen in this game, his success through the air has started to open things up for him on the ground because now he's loosened up the defense, right? They've got to play just about every snap as if another receiver can get downfield on them, and he's been that receiver. Now they bring him back to the backfield. I think his yardage running the ball will increase as this one goes on. Well, they might need to devote some extra attention to him, something just to stop the momentum he has. Now Rodgers lets it go for Nelson. He couldn't quite hold it, got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. Well, I guess we just discovered that someone is certainly not going to sit back and just take it in this game, huh? No, they were trying to get that touchdown back in one shot. One shot, trying to help out his defense and let the other team know they were coming after him. Second down following the incompletion. Play fake to Montgomery. Now Rodgers. Caught by Nelson left side. 23 yards on the play. And on that last play there, he's over 400 yards passing now. Do you know what that generally means? Success. <laughs> that, and it means you really didn't miss opportunities. Usually very accurate. The ball's getting to the right place. Guys are making yardage after the catch to help you out that way. I mean, the whole team has picked it up. And don't forget, that means the offensive line has had to pass protect pretty well, too. Yeah, everyone dialed in. Over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. And the offense can string something together, but they'll need to do it quickly here to try to get points on the board and win this game. Now Rodgers. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far, and the crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Rodgers again now. Open man is Allison complete. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Rodgers to Allison, good for a Green Bay first down. for a break. We'll come back and see how it all shakes out after this. So it's Packer football here as we welcome you back. They've got it first and ten as they search for a go-ahead score. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Rodgers handing to Montgomery. And oh, he is really laid out that time. Knocked flat on his back, right at the line of scrimmage. Partner, you've got about 20 coaches on your payroll, but there's 60,000 of them in the stands. I don't think any of them like that play. And the later we go, it's starting to sound like 100,000 in here. And here comes play number six on this drive. Right. 
They'll keep pounding here with Montgomery, fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. And now the Seahawks are going to take a timeout here on defense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. The Packers on third down. Now they've converted seven times and could use another right now. This is third and ten. On third down, they go Montgomery. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. And now the Seahawks are going to call another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This for the lead in the final stages. And the 10-year bet knocks it through the goalposts. And with a little over a minute to play, they have taken the lead. Well, now then, it's a big kick right there to give them the lead in the fourth. But, Charles, there is still time left for a final drive. Brandon, you know they would have liked to take the clock down just a little bit further, at least under a minute or so. But this was not over yet, especially since they just need a field goal. After the main field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. Russell Wilson now gears up to lead the offense again. This is something we've seen many times over the course of his career. Can he pull off another fourth quarter comeback? And it's very strange, isn't it? Because when it's a player of this magnitude, even though the guys on defense have the lead and are sitting in the best spot, they're maybe the most nervous people in the stadium because they've seen this happen to too many people before, too many teams. They've got to find a way to shut him down. Here we go again for the grizzled vet. Back to throw. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. Close there. He caught it, just wasn't able to stay in bounds. And that's where the sideline was used as a 12th defender. You know, 11's legal. This one is an imaginary one, one that my college coach used to call Sammy Sideline. <laughs> Sammy Sideline can protect you at times, and in this case, that's exactly what he did for the defenders. They'll look to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Mike Daniels in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. Back to throw. And he's got Lockett, and he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Give him 35 yards there on the third down conversion. And with just over 40 seconds now remaining, he gets up and spikes it. Offense still needing 10 yards, second down. He'll 
look to throw. Complete out right to Kurz. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. He's back to throw. He finds his man, Baldwin. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. Now we've got whistles and movement up front. I think this is against Seattle. And that'll set him back five. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Following the penalty now, Lacey. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. And with just inside of 10 seconds to go, they'll burn their final timeout. Nine seconds left. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. This to potentially send us to overtime. And we've got a timeout. Nine seconds remaining. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. This to potentially send us to overtime. And this kick is not going to get there. It's short and no good. Well, they got themselves in position to at least entertain the thoughts of an overtime, but as it turns out, it was not meant to be, Charles. And you feel bad for a kicker in this spot. He's going to have to shoulder a lot of the blame, but in reality... This will be a team loss. They didn't do enough collectively to get the job done. Rodgers will take a knee here, and that should be all she wrote. Well, I know at points in this when you wanted to close your eyes because of all the points that were being put on the scoreboard, you're a defensive guy, but it was a fun little track meet, wasn't it? It was, and you know the people really enjoyed this game? They're the ones that like going to batting practice at the Major League Baseball <laughs> parks, right? Seeing the 14-11 to 11 game, that sort of deal, that's right up their alley with what we saw in this one. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. 
I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Packers are winners here as we say so long from Lambeau.